Good evening to each one. So good to be with you and see you and worship God together. We invite you to take your Bibles out, be open to a text we were considering this morning of Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. We were blessed with visitors this morning. We're blessed with visitors this evening from the community and from those who are traveling to be with family and be with us tonight. We're so appreciative of everyone's presence, but especially those who are visitors and not members of this local church. We want you to know we count you as honored guests. We're encouraged by your presence, and we hope that you feel a warm and friendly and loving um, welcome from the brethren here. That's what we want you to experience, and we want you to know that it is our sincere desire to just follow the things found in the Word of God. And we are men and women, so that it doesn't Mean we'll always do that perfectly, though God's will is perfect. And so if you see or hear something that you believe that we're doing that's contrary to God's will, you would be a friend to bring that to our attention. So good to see Mark and Jojo able to be out with us tonight as we continue to remember them and especially our sister Tina. In Romans chapter 8, as we read this morning, this is from the New King James Version on the screen. Verses 5 through 8, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Our subject for today is focusing on this topic of being spiritually minded. That's how the New King James Version renders it there in verse 6 of Romans chapter 8. For to be carnally or fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so literally our topic, our subject today is a matter of life and death. That's what Paul says here in this text. A matter of spiritual life eternal or spiritual death for all eternity. There are many things in this world and that the world offers that even... From the very beginning, Satan used those three avenues of temptation, right, with Eve in the garden. He came at even our Lord and Savior in the text of Matthew 4 and Luke 4 with those three same avenues of temptation. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. And one of the points we're emphasizing this this morning was that the Christian were always being bombarded with the things in the world that we're not to love and not to participate in that would cause us to not be spiritually minded, but to be fleshly minded. And we have to abstain from those fleshly lusts which war against our soul, as Peter says in 1 Peter 2.11. And yet... There's those things that maybe, and I was talking to the boys on the way over to our young men's leadership training class this afternoon, there's things in, this, in life in this world that are not necessarily sinful in and of themselves, but are, can distract us and take us away from being spiritually minded. You know what I mean? Think about just, for example, technology and the screens and how much time we can spend on things that are, are futile and, and are, are, are not spiritual spiritual nature, and we can do that to an extent where it does spill over into something then that is sinful because we're neglecting the things of God. It's kind of like the expression or saying that we speak of a squirrel, right? My boss thinks I don't pay it. Oh, look, there's a squirrel. And as just creatures of of habit and human beings, there's so many things in this life on a day-to-day basis that can kind of be be like that that squirrel back and forth and we lose our focus on the spiritual things. 
and we begin to focus on things that don't matter or even uh, to a worse extent things of the flesh that in carnality that will bring us death ultimately. And so we talked about this morning just briefly reviewing those four points to be spiritually minded as we have in this very text of Romans 8. We do that by setting our mind on the spirit. And how do we do that? Well, the Spirit has revealed the Word of God, and so to be led by the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, to be filled with the Spirit, we need to be filled with the things that the Spirit has revealed in the Word of God. And so even connected to that, we talked about, well, to be spiritually minded, then I need to be meditating, pondering, focusing on my, heart, my heart and mind upon the Word of God, as the psalmist did to delight in the law of the Lord and to meditate day and night in His law. And we illustrated that by that great text of Romans 12. What if we just, the rest of today or this whole week, we took those 21 verses and and we focused on on what Paul says there, so much uh, practicality there to the Christian's everyday life. To be spiritually minded, we do that by devoting ourselves to prayer. We ask the question, how much time are we presently spending in prayer? Do we spend much time in prayer? Do we spend just a little time in prayer? If we'll devote ourselves to prayer, if we'll be faithful in it, if we'll be constant in it, it will help us, no doubt, to be more spiritually minded and focused. And then by always assembling with the saints. When you think about why we're assembled together today on the Lord's Day, obviously it's for the purpose of worshiping God. To come before God's presence, to worship Him in spirit and truth, to remember our Savior's suffering and death and partaking of the emblems of the Lord's Supper, to offer up prayers together as a congregation of saints before our Father's throne in heaven to cheerfully give back a portion of what the Lord has blessed us in order to support the work of the Lord here in this place. Uh, To sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs as tonight Brother Randy has led us in, to uh, stir us up to love and good works, to teach and admonish one another through those songs, to praise God with our tongues and our lips, and of course to teach and preach from the Word of God. All those things, if we're if we are not checked out, and, it, and again, and kind of like that squirrel, even during worship, it's, it's easy for it to kind of happen just like that. And our minds are not where they ought to be, right? And sometimes that happens to me. I'm not pointing fingers. I mean, it's easy for that to happen to any of us. Then we got to immediately catch ourselves and bring us back to what we're doing here, to be spiritually minded and for that to become a habit characteristic and all the good, all the spiritual good we derive just by being in the habit of always assembling, if at all possible, whenever the saints come together. Well, let's look at some further points this evening that I believe, and I'm convinced, that will help you, help me, to be spiritually minded. Be spiritually minded by always staying busy in the work of the Lord. You know this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse 58, the Apostle Paul wrote, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And of course, when we talk about the work of the Lord, that's not just one thing that we would point to, just that one specific thing, that's the work of the Lord. But it's a variety of duties and responsibilities that have been revealed to us by the Holy Spirit in the New Testament as New Testament Christians. You know, a little later, in the book of Romans, we were there in Romans 8, but in Romans chapter 12, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, Romans chapter 12 and verse 11 in the New King James, and the New American Standard Bible reads very similar to this, but not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. And doing that with zeal, doing that with diligence, not being slothful. 
Um, the ESV says, do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. And the NIV reads in Romans chapter 12, verse 11, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Staying busy in the Lord's work. Don't you think if we're staying busy in the Lord's work, our mind will be focused where it needs to be? Uh, Elijah, and we might say understandably, his mind was focused on the Lord's work there in 1 Kings 18, and then it wasn't in 1 Kings 19. There's that great victory on Mount Carmel over the false prophets of Baal and Asherah. Great victory. God's glorified. Baal is exposed to be what he was, not true, false, fake, and phony. But by chapter 19, the prophet is literally running and fleeing for his life as he's the most wanted man in the kingdom. Jezebel is planning to kill him just like he went and executed her prophets. And so he flees and he says, Lord, it's enough. Take my life. I'm no better than my father's. But when you get to around the end of that chapter of 1 Kings 19, what is the Lord doing with Elijah? He's getting him back to work, his work. I need you to go and do this, Elijah, and then I need you to go do that, and then I need you to go do this. Now again, we might say understandably, here's someone who wants to kill him, but even when things get very difficult and hard, we need to continue to trust the Lord with all our heart. The Lord's work must not stop. We must stay busy in it, steadfast in it, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. It's too important to, to not do that. But again, when we're engaged in the Lord's work, it helps us, it helps our mindset to be spiritually focused, doesn't it? Instead of fleshly and carnally and worldly focused. Sure it does. And then a little later in Romans chapter 12 and verse 13, it says, distributing to the needs of the saints. And, and there's so many texts in the Gospels and in the Epistles where we could go to, where we see there's an example of distributing to the needs of the saints. Right? Um, I think of Dorcas, I think of Tabitha, she's also called there in Acts chapter 9, who's described as being full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. And all the, the, the many of the saints, the women talked about what she, she did uh, during her lifetime, how she was serving others, distributing to the needs of others. And we see that in, in many places, but if we'll do that, if we'll be busy distributing to the needs of the saints when those needs arise, that, that helps us to keep a, a spiritual focus. You just think about the work of the local church. If we're focused on the work of the church, which we think about teaching the lost around us, Boy, that's really going to help us keep a spiritual-minded focus, isn't it? If, if we'll stay involved in that on a, on a daily, weekly basis, uh, yes, we do that as, congregationally, but as we go out as individual Christians out into the, to the, a lost and dying world, to keep that focus, that I, want, I need to be a salt to the earth, Christ calls me that, I need to be a light to the world, Jesus calls me to do that, to point others to the Father, but I also need to be opening my mouth and confessing Him before men, Jesus calls me to do that, and again, if that's our, our mind's focus, which it needs to be, not only will we be planting the seed of, of, of the kingdom more and leading more to Christ, it, we also have that great benefit. It's, it's going to help us to have that spiritual mindset of edifying the saints, of assisting needy saints. 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, it says, Warn the unruly. Comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. I'm talking about the, doing the work of the Lord and always staying busy in it. That's other aspects of the Lord's work. When there's unruly saints, we need to warn them. When there's those who are faint-hearted, we need to observe that and comfort them. When uh, there, there are those who are weak, whether physically or spiritually, we need to help uphold them. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Yes, be your brother's keeper, your sister's keeper, and be patient with all. Or as we read in Galatians 6, 6 verse 1, and James 5, 19 and 20, what's another aspect of the Lord's work? Those who have overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. 
or one who has wandered away from the truth. James 5, 19, and we restore, we restore that brother or that sister. That's all part of doing the work of the Lord. You see, it's not just one thing, but there's so many aspects to that that we need to continue to stay busy in. And when we do that, when we're active participants and workers and servants in the body of Christ, brethren, it's going to help us with being spiritually minded to setting the mind on the things that the Spirit has revealed in the Word of God. Furthermore, being, to be spiritually minded, be spiritually minded by focusing your mind upon godly thoughts. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. We talked about that word a little bit this morning with Psalm 119 and Psalm 1 about that use of the word meditating on God's word. That means to, to think deeply about something. In that case, God's word. But all these different attributes that is spoken of here of, of being true and noble and just and pure and lovely and good report and virtuous and praiseworthy, all those kind of things, that's what we need to be thinking on. That's what we need to be pondering and meditating upon. You know, we read in Proverbs 23, verse 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's just a reminder of how powerful your thoughts and my thoughts are. Our thoughts determine the kind of person that we are. Our thoughts. We're talking about being spiritually minded today, not fleshly minded. Our thoughts. What are we thinking upon? Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it spring the issues of life. Are we keeping our heart, our mind, our thoughts with all diligence? Because if we don't, if we're lazy about that, if we neglect the mind, then what do you think is going to settle there? Well, probably things and thoughts that are not always pure and not always praiseworthy and virtuous. That's why we gotta keep it with all diligence. You know, no question, focusing your mind, my mind on godly thoughts, no question that this is essential for every Christian to be spiritually minded. And, and for that mindset to then become characteristic of our day-to-day -day life, not just a Sunday, and a little bit on a Wednesday night, okay, now I'm going to be spiritually minded. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this ought to be and needs to be characteristic for me and for you on a day-to-day -day basis, 24-7, that we are continuing to grow and mature in our, our faith in Christ and our walk with God and being guided by the, the Spirit's revelation that we're spiritually minded Yet we're setting the mind on the spirit day to day. That's characteristic. And, and it really, this gets, I think, to the, the heart of the matter that we're focusing our minds, our hearts on godly thoughts. And again, there will be many things through a typical day that will distract our minds that will even entice and allure our thoughts, if we're not very careful, away from godliness and to vanity, futile, futile thoughts, futile mind, and to ungodliness. So focus your mind on, your mind on godly thoughts. Be spiritually minded, and for some reason this got a little backwards, but by spending much time with fellow Christians... Be spiritually minded by spending much time with fellow Christians. Psalm 119, verse 63, I am a companion of who? All who fear you. 
And of those who keep your precepts. Now, how many would that be that you typically are with week to week? Okay. Kind of be rather a small selection. But hopefully it's the people of God, right? Hopefully it's my brothers and sisters in Christ. And in 3 John, and this is just one chapter, but verse 4, we read, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. The Apostle John wrote, I have no greater joy than, what? than to hear that my children walk in truth. Well, I would suggest let's associate primarily with those who walk in truth. In other words, New Testament Christians. Now, we can't do that exclusively or that would negate what we said earlier about being a salt to the earth and a light to the world and teaching others the gospel and confessing Jesus to men and women who are lost in sin. But I hope you know what I'm, I'm, I'm saying here. I'm not talking about become a recluse and hide in our homes. No, that won't work but who we associate and spend the majority of our time with that we can control, let it be those who fear God, those who are striving to keep His precepts. You know, we need, we need to heed the warning that we find in the book of Proverbs in chapter 12 and verse 26. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26, it says, The righteous, the righteous should choose his friends carefully. Why? For the way of the wicked leads them astray. The righteous, so God's children, that would equate to Christians today. We need to choose our friends carefully. Why? Because even the righteous can and will be led astray by the wicked. If we continue to just hang around spend time with wicked people and that's the majority of our friends and the majority of our time is spent with them, the Bible warns in the, both the Old and New Testament that's going to have a, an effect on you, a negative impact on you. Maybe we're reminded of what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be deceived, evil companions corrupt good morals. Our, compa our companions matter. God says in both the Old and New Testament. And so you think about it. When work and school and sports, etc., is spent with people of the world primarily, or in some cases maybe exclusively, then how imperative it is that children of God make a more concerted effort, young people, I'm speaking to you as well with this, to spend as much time as possible with other children of light because the children of darkness will neg negatively over time impact, yes, even children of light. So who are you spending most of your time with when you hang out with people? You know, sometimes there's, there's little to no choice going into the workplace of course, if it becomes such an ungodly environment, then seek employment elsewhere. Or you go to school. I mean, you're surrounded by a lot of young people, unfortunately, that are not spiritually minded. Or you participate in athletics. And you may be with teammates that some are, have some good morals and some believe in God and the Bible, and that's good. But uh, many of them are going to be using foul language and uh, ungodly speech and references to things that are impure and activities they participate in and do on the weekend or that are, are not fit for a saint, one who's seeking to, to please God. But when you go out and hang out and spend time with companions, who are we choosing to be with primarily. Let it be the people of God. That will help you, that will help me to be more spiritually minded. Would you agree? 
Be spiritually minded by pursuing things that are good. Come, on, come with me over to 1 Timothy chapter 6, please. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And notice verse 11, and then we're going to notice verse 12 as well. But in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 11, we read, But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Flee what? Well, what had he just talked about? What had just been discussed here? This is the text that Alex read for us, right? He read the verses that preceded it. Godliness with contentment's great gain, verse 6, brought nothing to this world, certain we're going to carry nothing out. Verse 8, having food and clothing with these, we shall be content, but what? Those who desire to be rich, they fall into temptation, a snare, into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Verse 10, for the love of money, that's a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So in light of that, we come to verse 11, but you, O man of God, what flee these things, those vain pursuits of desiring to be rich, of having material wealth and accumulating those kinds of things, and rather focus on pursuing righteousness, pursue godliness, Pursue faith, pursue love, pursue patience, pursue gentleness. So flee, pursue. You know, ultimately, verse 12 of 1 Timothy 6, we should be pursuing eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession, the presence of many witnesses. We need to be fighting that good fight of faith and laying a hold of eternal life. Can you think of pursuing anything better, more good than that? But again, would you agree that as we consider our study today in Romans 8 and expanding from that text that to be spiritually minded, to mind the things of the Spirit, that this will go a long way in helping us and that to become characteristic of, of our hearts and our, our lives if we're pursuing the right things, if we're pursuing the things that Paul speaks of here in 1 Timothy 6, 11, if, if we're uh, doing what Paul says in 2 Timothy 2, 22, that we're fleeing youthful lust, but we pursue righteousness and faith and love and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, and as the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness. So pursue peace, pursue holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So I guess I would ask you before we leave this point, what are you presently pursuing in your life? Are you pursuing these kind of things? Mentioned in verse 11 and verse 22 of 2 Timothy 2 and peace and holiness that we just read here in Hebrews 12 and verse 14. Are you more focused on the pursuit of earthly things and material things and fleshly things and ungodly things or the spiritual and godly things? Is that what we're pursuing? Oh, it makes all the difference, doesn't it? Of our mindset and then ultimately where we'll be spending eternity because of what we're pursuing and what we're fleeing away from. That's a sermon in and of itself. <laughs> the things uh, that we need to be fleeing away from, the things we need to be pursuing after. And be spiritually minded by setting your mind on things above. Go to the text with me of Colossians 3, please. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, the Apostle Paul writes, Set your mind 
What are we talking about? Being spiritually minded. So set your mind on things above. Not on things that are easier said than done. I'm just going to go back to what we've said and what Todd expressed in, in wrapping up services this morning about there's so many things in, in this world that, that would distract us, that would allure us and entice us and, and get us off the focus of, of God and of Christ and of the Lord's work and spiritual matters. And so it's important that we would lock in and, and focus and set our mind each day upward. Now, verse 1, he said, If then you were raised with Christ, so all Christians, that's speaking to us, right? Raised with Christ, now the waters of baptism. Seek those things which are above where Christ is. Setting your, sitting, sitting, excuse me, on the right, at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. So let's focus our minds where? On heaven. Let's focus our minds on Christ. Where, he, where is He? In heaven. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 reads... Looking at, that we are to look unto Jesus, who's what? The author and finisher of our faith. If we're, if we're looking unto Jesus, we're thinking about Jesus, our minds are set on Jesus, he, he, he helped begin, He's the author, He's going to be the finisher of our faith. Keep your focus. You know, verse 1 there of Hebrews cha chapter 12, it's talking about we're, we're in this race, and there's trials, and we need to run it, this marathon, this spiritual marathon race that we're in with endurance, looking unto Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our, of our faith. There in Philippians chapter 3, in verse 14, Paul says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You know, earlier in, in verse 13, he says, forgetting those things which are behind what if we keep looking back? We lose our focus. We keep dwelling on the past. Whether that's mistakes we made and sins we committed that we sought God's forgiveness, whether that's, you know, things were better then, we got to focus on what? Keep your focus on heaven. Press toward that goal of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 20, Philippians 3, For our citizenship is where? In heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then if you'll turn with me in your New Testaments to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. 2 Corinthians 4, again, verses 16 through 18. Paul writes to the saints in Corinth, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are what? They're temporary. They're not lasting, they're not enduring, but the things which are not seen, that's, that's, those things are eternal. So what are we looking at? Are we setting our mind on things that are temporary? The world and the things of the world that are passing away and the lust thereof? Or are we setting our mind and hard on the eternal? Are we laying up our treasures on earth where moth and rust Destroy and thieves break in and steal. Are we laying up our treasures in heaven? Where neither moth nor rust destroy. Where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Where are we setting our mind? Hopefully on heaven. How often are we thinking about heaven? It's so easy to lose that most important focus and the most important goal and be fixated with things of this life. Martha, Martha. You are worried or you're troubled over many things. You're distracted 
He was distracted with much serving. Nothing sinful there, good in and of itself. But she was missing out on what was most important in the other room. Jesus was teaching. But Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to lose our focus. It's easy to slip from being spiritually minded over to the other side. May God help you and me and all of us in being spiritually minded. I'd ask you to take out your hymn book, not to the song of invitation just yet, but to number 598, the song before the lesson. I appreciate Brother Randy leading that. You know, when you go to 598, and I want us to look at these verses, because I think this, I think the words of the verses of this song, take time to be holy, fits perfectly with the majority of the points we've made in our two lessons today. So 598, take time to be holy. Let's read that together. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. There's prayer. Abide in him always and feed on his word. There's Psalm 119, Psalm 1. Make friends of God's children. We made that point tonight. Help those who are weak. That's part of doing the Lord's work. Forgetting in nothing his blessings to seek. Verse 2, take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. That could be prayer and Bible study. By looking to Jesus like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct his likeness shall see. There's the salt of the earth being a light into the world. Verse 3, take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. That takes effort and work, doesn't it? Each thought, remember Philippians 4, 8, each thought, each motive beneath His control. Thus led by His Spirit, that's Romans 8, 14, to fountains of love, thou soon shalt be fitted for service above. There's heaven. There's our sermon. <laughs> Take time to be holy. Maybe as a child of God, there's some aspect of unholiness in your life that you recognize and you realize you need to make that right with the Lord. If that's just between you and God, then please take care of that immediately. His mercy is a, and His grace are abundant. His loving kindness. If we'll confess, repent, pray to Him, He'll forgive us. He'll cleanse us with the blood of His Son. Maybe it's of a public nature, or even if it's not, that you just desire the prayers and encouragement of your brethren. We want to help one another. We're here for each other. And we'll pray with you and for you. But if you're not a child of God yet, no better, no greater decision could you make than to become a child of God. For this to be your spiritual birthday. Come to Jesus, believing in Him, repent of your sins, confess your faith in Him. Be buried with him in baptism, baptized into his death. Have your sins washed away. Be raised to walk in newness of life. And continue to develop a spiritual mindset. To mind the things of the Spirit. To grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you have a spiritual need, we hope you'll let that be known as we stand, as we sing.